Welcome to the JS Self-Care Mind, Body, and Soul Podcast. I am your host, Janelle. I am a self-care life coach, a social worker, and an advocate for parental substance abuse. I want to welcome my new listeners, and I also want to welcome listeners. Thank you for making the JS Self-Care Mind, Body, and Soul Podcast part of your weekly routine. I appreciate and I love you. This week, we will be talking with Lalia, personal and professional goal strategist, about her journey to self-care and what made her to start understanding that the importance of her putting herself first before anyone else. Without further ado, I want to introduce to you Lalia. Lalia, can you tell us about you and what made you begin your journey to self-care? Hi, Janelle, and hi, everyone who's tuning in. Thank you so much for the invitation. Um, So thank you for the beautiful introduction. So being a personal and professional goal strategist, what does that mean, right? I'm someone who has always been focused on, you know, the planning aspect and keeping things organized, having some kind of routine and some kind of structure. So for me, I ended up on this quest to... um, really put self-care at the top of the priority list and find a way to make your personal and professional goals something that you continue to go after. So, so many of us get so caught up in that daily struggle to juggle it all. And we get caught up in these different hats that we wear and we just get locked into these roles and responsibilities and we forget to focus on the things that we actually wanted to do. So part of me being a, a personal and professional goal strategist is finding a way to link up an action plan with the goals that people have in place for themselves so that they can make it to where they want to be in life versus just doing what they're doing on a daily basis, living paycheck to paycheck and just not being happy, not being fulfilled, not living a life of purpose and intention. So my journey to self-care, it, it was really a blessing to even be asked to participate and share my journey because it makes you kind of take a second to look in the mirror and and think about the actual journey and what i think is beautiful about showcasing that is not just glorifying where you end up but really taking a moment to look back and see where you actually started the struggles that you faced and how you got where you got so for me my um awakening as you you refer to it as um i really hit a place of rock bottom with you know resentment and frustration for where i was in life and I was forced to have to, you know, take a look in the mirror and think about what I wanted for myself. So I'm going to throw it back a little bit. Um, my journey to self-care, I would say, if I could think back, started really around the age of 24. So at the age of 21, I got pregnant with my first child. Um, it caused a lot of turmoil at that time. It, it was something that I didn't expect to happen at that moment. I was in my first year of college. Um, I had taken a year off before that, realized I didn't want to be in school for nursing, changed, you know, what I thought my career path should be. And I was a group of things really doing well in school. And then I found out that I was pregnant. So um, it was a source of you know, frustration, I guess, for me, it was, you know, I I was disappointing the people around me. Um, People were giving me all this feedback about how I was never gonna, you know, finish school. And what was I going to do? How was I going to support a child? And it was just a really stressful time. So I ended up being very depressed. Um, I found myself pretty much isolated, you know, at 21, everybody else is really just jumping on the the drinking and the dating scene. And for me, it was kind of like, you know, a timeout. So I I found myself quickly going from totally free, um, you know, college kid to, you know, now I'm pregnant, I was struggling with, um, you know, I I didn't have uh, morning sickness, I was nauseous, I was sick all day long. So I was actually physically ill. And then in a place where I couldn't even go to class because I, I couldn't sit in the classroom, you know, no windows, not being able to just get up and come and go as I pleased. Um, so it was rough. And, and that's really where it started for me, because that's when I started to, to realize that my, my self-esteem and my self-worth was really low at the time. So I... Did you you have some, can I ask you a question? Did you have support from your mom and your parents or 
it was just you you and your your unborn child against the world so it actually felt like just me and her against the world because um like i said i felt like it was a, a big disappointment right so my mom you know she wanted me to go to school she wanted all these things for me and i don't think that at that time she was able to realize that I would be able to eventually do it all, you know, so where a pregnancy looked like a big obstacle for everyone else and something that would, you know, stop me dead in my tracks, it, it did cause a lot of, you know, drama, you know, because everybody was not on board with it at first. So I was, I did find myself, it was just me and her against pretty much the world, which kind of leads to my next, you know, bump in the road, which was ending up a single parent. So even though her father and I, you know, were totally on the same page, we, you know, not that we made our beds and we were going to lay in it, but whether or not we thought that I was going to be having a child that quickly in the relationship, we were both totally fine with it. And we knew what we needed to do. And um, we kind of agreed to just move forward and, and do that. Everything was still good. We were still together. And then out of nowhere, he decides that he's just going to disappear. So then I found myself, you know, as a single mom and not really having that support from everybody else. Cause like I said, you know, it was a stressful time. I wasn't doing what everybody thought I should be doing. And, um, it was rough. So I ended up actually going right away. Um, I went to school full time, took five classes, worked two minimum wage jobs. Cause you know, I come from a really good home. Um, we always had, you know, nobody ever went without. So it was interesting for me too, because outside looking in, people would see I have this beautiful house that I'm living um, and think that everything is just kind of handed to you. But I wasn't raised like that. So regardless of what roof was put over my head, it was still on me to make sure that I took care of myself and I took care of my child, which is why I still worked so hard. I, I don't know if it was, you know, being the oldest or, or however that may be, but I, I'm just the type of person that if I could do for myself, I'm going to do for myself by any means necessary and provide for my child. So, um, yeah, so I ended up, you know, as a single mom working really hard, things came, things were much better by the time my daughter was like two, as far as everybody's seeing that I didn't just drop off the face of the earth. You know, I didn't stop with my goals and, and finishing school. I, I finished, I got my bachelor's of science in psychology, um, went on to get a job working at a children's psychiatric hospital. Things were seemingly going good for me, but I did realize at that time, and that was around the age of 24, that I was still kind of looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm. Right. So at, having a child at 21 and then becoming a single parent, I felt like that was like it for me, right? Who's going to want me? I, I don't, you know, I'm somebody else's baby mama. Like nobody's going to want that kind of drama, that kind of relationship. So I was really depressed about it. And I kind of entertained the idea of being with whoever wanted to be with me. So instead of having like these standards and knowing what I was worth, it was kind of like, oh, somebody doesn't care that I have a child. Like, okay. And investing time and energy in people that really didn't deserve to keep company with me. Absolutely. So, that's an important part of, of my self-care journey because it was then that I realized that self-worth, self-love, and self-care were all interconnected and you got to line them all up. So um, somewhere around the age of 25, I started to, to really go hard with, you know, setting goals for myself, making my dreams a reality. I went back to school again, got my master's in human resource management. Then um, I hit a big career shift, right? So I get two pr promotions within eight months. I'm thinking I'm doing great, climbing the career ladder. I'm making these awesome connections, networking with people. And then I get pregnant with my second child. By this time, I'm married. So okay. you know, there's not so much judgment outside it looking in, right? Because, okay, at least I was married, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I did. You follow what the world, quote unquote, traditional, you know? Exactly. You go to school. You get married, you have a baby. That's exactly. how the world looks at. That's their the normal, but it's not. That's not their at all. normal. Not at all. And another important piece that I would love for people to take away um, after this is that 
sometimes when we make decisions based on what we think the world wants us to do or society is looking for us to do, we're making decisions that are not for ourselves, you know? So I think that I did rush into a lot of things, you know, relationship wise, trying to create a stable home for my daughter, you know, and, and that's kind of a part of the journey that I'm still on, you know, looking at decisions that I made that I didn't necessarily make for myself based on what I wanted for myself, based on what I needed as an individual, which is another huge part of my coaching practice and, and things that I like to instill into other people. We have to know what we want as individuals in order to, you know, move forward, make decisions that are going to benefit us. And so we need to stop thinking and stop putting into consideration what the world wants us to want. Absolutely. Because you know what, behind closed doors at the end of the day, nobody can see what's going on in your house. Nobody can see what's going on in your heart, in your mind. So you're doing whatever you're doing based on what you think the world is expecting of you, but you have to sit with those decisions by yourself at the end of the day. So, um, so by this time now I'm climbing the career ladder. I'm, I'm, you know, married, which is supposed to be the, you know, doing the traditional thing this time around thinking that things are going to be, you know, easier, but I hadn't actually, you know, planned this second pregnancy. So for me, while I welcomed, you know, new life and an opportunity to, you know, be a mother to another child, it, it was really hard for me to deal with because I, I really had a goal I was working towards. And for me, it was a big roadblock, right? In my mind at the time, it was a huge roadblock. So I find myself in a position to where now I'm a stay at home mom, right? Because the cost of childcare is the same as what my salary was. So it does not benefit me or my child for me to put them in daycare pay my whole paycheck and be sitting somewhere else, letting somebody else raise my child for me. Right. Mm -hmm. So I end up now as a stay at home mom, but I put in place, right. Cause that's me. I, I got to keep going with my goals, my dreams. When my daughter turns one, I'm going to go back to work. Lo and behold, my daughter turns 11 months old. I find out I'm pregnant with my third child. So again, another bump in the road, right. For me, another, you know, I'm welcoming it. I said, you know what, this has to be God giving me my boy, right? It's got to be all a part of the plan. And I'm good with that. Knowing that things come up in life that are not a part of the plan, but seeing value in them anyway, and knowing that, you know, what's meant for me will be for me. But that doesn't make it any less difficult to deal with when you have a plan that you think you're working towards, and then something else pops up. It still takes some time to process that. So I find myself, now I'm home with two small children under the age of two by myself. I have no connection to, to friends, right? There's no, I'm getting up and I'm going to work. The social life is completely cut out and it starts to really weigh on me heavily, you know? And mm -hmm. I just, at that time, all I could see was like the, the frustration, but it started off as, you know, I was really sad. I'm sad all the time. I'm very lonely. My husband is working all day. He's coming home. He wants to just eat, shower and go to sleep. I'm looking for somebody to talk to about my day. And, and that's not really how that was going. So I found myself in a place of, of real sadness and what actually turned into frustration with my circumstances. Cause now it's like, all right, well, I went to school. I did all these things I was supposed to do. How is it that I'm a stay at home children? You know, that's not a part of, that wasn't, that wasn't the plan that I had for myself. And Somewhere along the line, I ended up having to look myself in the mirror and see that I was actually so resentful of my circumstances for no reason, right? So it's all about perception. I'm grateful now to be home with my children, right? I found a way to flip the script on that. But at that time, it was just looking at what I didn't have that I thought I was supposed to have. And I realized that that was because I was taking care of myself. So all this being frustrated that I don't have any social life and I don't have any friends and I do this and I don't get to do that. Those were circumstances that, you know, they were part of the cards that I was dealt, but I did create those circumstances for myself because there was no reason why I couldn't say, Hey, I really need to at least step out and get breakfast with a friend. Or, you know what? I'm walking around here. My nails aren't done. My toes aren't done. I need 20 minutes to sit there and make sure I cut my nails, put some polish on my toes. It was on me, you know, and that was something that was kind of a light bulb went off, you know, like, wow, how many women are sitting home feeling sad, feeling frustrated, feeling stuck, and not really realizing that we have the power to turn that around. 
because we have the choice to make self-care a priority. Absolutely. So I started doing these, I had this idea, I wanted to do a self-care event. I don't know what it was. It was a way to, you know, tie up all the loose ends, right? It would be something social because it would be a bunch of women coming together. Um, I was going to have food. I was going to have drinks. It was going to be a great time. And it was. Sold tickets. I booked this um, a little event hall. I, it was nice and small, mostly family and friends who wanted to come out and support me. But there was one woman that I would have never met otherwise, right? Someone who just saw the, the ad pop up and said, you know what? Something was calling her to say she needed to go. She bought a ticket and came. At the end of this event, I go home and I get an email from this woman who said, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a mother, but I am a woman. And it's so necessary to hear women talk about the things that you talked about, because you know me, Janelle, I got something mm -hmm. to say about everything. Right. So I wasn't going to just have an event where we were going to sit there and have food and drinks. We were going to talk about some stuff. Wow. So, you know, I created like a little game that put together like a, a speech about prioritizing self-care and, and how we deserve it and how we need it and how it's not a luxury. It is a necessity, but that only we can make sure we have. Yeah. So this woman sent me this beautiful letter and it, it really touched me. It made me cry. She said, you know, she was raised by a single woman who she wished would have had an opportunity to attend an event like that you know, to know that it was okay to put herself first instead of just running around taking care of her children. Because yes, I am a mother. I do have three kids. That is a big part of, you know, the hats that I wear, the different things that I juggle on a daily basis. But as a woman, you know, I'm like a natural born caregiver, right? I'm the oldest of three other, you know, I'm the oldest of three. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've always been the type to run around taking care of everybody and think about my. So it was good to connect with that woman too, because it kind of pulled me out of that. Just, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a mom, I'm a mom. Cause there's other women who are out there that are struggling with it. There are men that are out there struggling with it. You know, all these responsibilities that we have and not putting ourselves first. So true. Lalia, people will say mothers, single mothers or mothers with a husband at home. And you ask them, what do you do? I'm a mother. My life is my children. Yes. They have nothing outside of, their children. Bobby did this. Johnny did this. Tina did this. That yep. is their life. And for you to want to promote women to understand that there's so much more to you. There All is right. so much more to you. You may have to do some digging and healing because in your world, you want to live what society wants you to live. You want to be what society needs you to be that you lose yourself in the process. Absolutely. Nobody wants to be the outcast. But the problem is that that dying to fit in will kill you. You will be Absolutely. resentful. You will be alone. You will be miserable. And it's hard because nobody wants to really face that part of it. You know, doing sometimes the, the best thing for yourself is sometimes the hardest thing to do. But and there's also that being guilty. Right. So that was mm -hmm. another part of my self-care journey. I realize that people ask you, oh, well, you, not even do, what do you do? What, like, who are you? Right. A, a couple of times people have got on like lives and it's like, introduce yourself and, oh, I'm this and I'm that, but I'm a mother first. I'm a wife. I'm this, I'm that. And I'm tired of it. You know, uh, uh, no cap. I'm but that's tired not who that. you are. Exactly. You who do. are you as an individual? Exactly. Put down these hats that you wear and dig into who you are as a person. Right. What do you like to do? What, what is it about you? as an individual and people can't see past these roles that we wear and the, the different hats, the different titles, the different responsibilities far enough to see, you know, who they actually are. And sometimes when you take a step back and, and look at who you are as an individual, then you have an understanding of what you actually want. And you might realize I'm not where I want to be in life. Right. So I had this grand idea that I was going to go to school for psychology. I was going to be a therapist. No, I take everybody's stuff home with me. Right. I wanted to take these kids home. I'm combing hair. I'm buying deodorant. I'm making sure they brush their teeth. Some of the stories that I would hear, I couldn't really like disconnect from like I felt so bad I realized for me that would not be a profession that I would flourish in right that was going to kill me 
especially having children at home that I, I go home to. So I switched career paths, right? I focused on human resource management, right? Because then I saw people that didn't really care about the patients and they didn't need to be around them. And, and I thought that that's where I was going with that. But then lo and behold, I find myself a stay-at-home mom and I have all this wealth of knowledge, right? Master of human resource management. I have all these transferable skills, but what am I doing with them, right? I'm sitting on all this knowledge. I got $100,000 in student loan debt, right? What yes. are we going to do with that? So I said, I'm going to, I'm going to put it to use. So I started, I started, people were reaching out to me, asking me if I was a life coach after these self-care events, because of the stuff that I was talking about in there, right? Some people found it motivational. It was inspirational for some. And I started thinking like, well, you know, I wasn't an actual life, like I'm not a certified life coach. Like, no, I didn't feel comfortable running with that. So I started how many hats coaching, right? And I just called it, you know, personal coaching. If somebody needed a place to vent, a safe place to talk, if you needed to help navigate, you know, what you actually want to do, do that deep dive into what you want as an individual. Think about what goals you had for yourself before you became a mother, before you became a wife, right? I had another um, a woman I was coaching and she was d debating what she was going to name her business. And my my name on everything is Lalia Jimenez. That's my maiden name. Why? I did, That's from the ground up for me. I got it out the mud. So for me, I didn't even want my, my married name attached to those things because it's something that I really hustled hard for. And it resonates with me as an individual, not as my husband's wife. Mm. So, you know, people find it hard to dig that deep, deep and to look past that, you know, like what you want to do. And you get caught up in that. Sometimes you start a joint venture with somebody, right? So your partner, you, you the two of you want to open a business together, but it's all this joint, 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 joint. What are you bringing to the table as an individual that resonates with you? So and that's a hard question, I must say. It is. It's, um, it's a hard question because you're in the coaching business. I'm in a coaching business, but we have family and friends. And most of the time we ask a person, what is it that you want to do? Well, my husband want me to be a nurse. My mother yep. want me to be the doctor. But I, I, I love talking to people. But that's really not my passion. And then you realize that that is your passion because you wrote, you said, I love talking to people. And then you told me about what everybody else wants you to do. And right. it's a hard, it's a hard question and it's a hard task when you have to unpeel and say, you know what? My journey is different. My journey is this is what I want. Forget what everybody else wants. Forget how everybody else wants me to live and how everybody else wants me to be a mother, a stay at home mom. I'm going right. to do it this way. And that's right. just taking power over you. Exactly. And once you find a way to do that, then you realize that anything is possible, right? We all have this limitless potential, but you have to tap into it and you have to make it work. So, like I said, people were reaching out, they were asking me stuff, and then that planted a seed too. So, if mm -hmm. I'm coaching people and I'm doing this right, so why not get certified, right? So, go on to then add something else to the credential list, right? Become a certified life coach. So, now you are in a position where you learn the, the tips and tricks of the trade, right? You learn how to listen to people, you know how to communicate with people on their level, right? You know how to offer advice and, and insight into things without telling someone what they need to be doing. And sometimes that's how you lead people to realize where they actually want to be. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we're stuck in this rut, like you said, you know, oh, well, this one wants me to be a doctor. This one wants me to be this. And that was me. You know, my mom wanted me to be, I wanted to be a teacher. No, there's not enough money in this profession or, or, or no, there's not enough this. There's not enough that. I went to school for nursing my first year. I wasted a whole year of tuition going to LaGuardia for nursing school. I was not trying to be anybody's nurse. Right. Ended up taking another year off, then realized, all right, I was interested in psychology. I was interested in X, Y and Z, found something that I actually was interested in and focused on that. But things do change. And that's another part of the journey and the process is realizing that you're allowed to change what you want to do. You're allowed to change what you're interested in. So if you say you want to be a lawyer and you get into that field and you don't want to be a lawyer anymore, that's OK. Find out what you want to do and and do it. You know, because there's, there's, you're not too old. You're not too, you're, nobody's too anything to do what you want to do. Once you figure out that that's where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for a lot of people. And, and that's what brings it back to, you know, self-care. Like thinking about what you want for yourself 
what suits you best and, and living that truth. And that's when I started living my best life. Right. So then from, from that, instead of just, I'm not a, a stay at home mom, you know, I, I'm not the stay at home, anything type. I'm not anybody's stay at home wife. I'm not a stay at home mom. I'm not a stay at home friend. Right. I like to do what I want to do. I, I can't sit on ideas. I have a lot to say about a lot of things. So what am I going to do with that? Started uh, you know, my Instagram platform wanting to offer daily inspiration to people. And then from there, that's when, you know, the, the events took place. And then from the events turned into coaching, then coaching turned into business consulting, right? Using all the knowledge that I had, right? So w with that degree in human resources, I learned so many things, right? Accounting, marketing, everything is under that umbrella. And I found a way to apply that to do all these different things. And I am doing what I love now. You know, I'm, I'm coaching people. I'm helping people peel back different layers, look at their goals that they have for themselves and actually map out a plan. Don't just say you want to do something, map out all the steps that you need to take to get you there and hold you accountable for doing it, right? If you have a business venture that you want to do, nothing is too big, right? Plan that out too. Sometimes, especially with this pandemic, a lot of people realized that they had the potential to be self-employed. Absolutely. A and lot that, of entrepreneurs was born through the pandemic. Yeah, and because people you realize, had no choice. Yeah, people realize I really like doing X instead of Z because my aunt want me to do Z. I'm going to do X. How life is, and that's why I created this journey to self-care because we can never forget where we came from. Right. And realizing, like you said, when you first started this thing called life, you had your first child, it didn't work out. You went, you got married. You had the second child. You had the third child. Like, well, I'm not, I'm a stay at home mom. Cause you just say that that's what you thought you were quote unquote. Yeah. And then you realize I'm not staying at home. Nothing. I'm taking mm -hmm. my power back. Absolutely. And that's where it come from. You took your power back. You removed your power from your husband. You removed that power that your children had over you because people can have power over you. That that's what makes you powerless. Right. And it's so now perception. you're powerless. Yeah, you're powerless because you have given all your power to everybody else that you exhausted and realizing I have 10 degrees. I have all this perfect all these things that I could do. I went to school. I Googled this. I went to YouTube University. I have the knowledge, but I'm at a, I'm a stay at home mom. And you shifted that and said, no, I'm not nobody stay at home. Nothing. I'm not sitting home barefoot and pregnant. That is not my job. That's not why God put me on this earth. I'm put right. on this earth to do better. Right. And, and to show I other people that they can do better. My children included. Absolutely. So what yeah. are you teaching your three children? That you don't have to be what society wants you to be. Exactly. You don't have to be what mommy and daddy want you to be. You exactly. you have so much more potential. If you want to go outside and be a skateboard, go outside and skateboard, but make it to the Olympics or wherever you want to go. You want right. to travel on skateboard, travel on skateboard for your son. Or your daughters want to do hair, do hair, do the best hair. But do right. what you want, not mommy wants you to be a coach or work in human services or be an accountant because accountants right. make so much money. Money is not the key to everything because no. you could be rich and be miserable. Yeah. And when I say that, absolutely. And when I say that to a lot of people, I always look at the Chris Browns, the Whitney Houston's, all of these people had money. They didn't have happiness. Right. So they indulge in illegal drugs or drugs, prescribe drugs to mask the pain right. instead of living their best life. Right. And that takes self-reflection. That takes looking in the mirror. That takes getting sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know? And then it, once I got to the lowest point of, you know, I'm depressed, I'm sad, I'm lonely, I'm angry, I'm this, I'm that, but I'm angry with who? You know, who told me mm -hmm. that I couldn't do all of these things? Nobody. You know, so sometimes we get so caught up in, in what we think is the right way to do things too, you know, and, and you lose out on a lot of opportunities that you actually need to create for yourself. So it's, it's all a part of the process. It definitely is. But, you know, self-reflection is, is key. Looking at what you want to be doing, 
compared to what you're actually doing and, and your comfort level with where you're at. If you're, if you're comfortable, then you, then you're probably not challenging yourself enough, right? Nobody should be too comfortable. If you're not doing something that doesn't make you a little uncomfortable, a little bit challenged, you have work to do. There's still something out there for you to do. So true. We got to be uncomfortable and it's okay to be uncomfortable. It, un, being uncomfortable is not a horrible thing right. because there's a light at the end of the tunnel, we, tunnel where you will get comfortable, right? Right. Uncomfortability is okay, but we got to spread those words because people think being sad is not okay. Right. Feeling, feeling unhappy is not okay. Being uncomfortable, stay in your safe space, stay in your comfortability. Why you want to jump out and be something you can't be? You got to leave those negative annies alone. Because mm -hmm. they'll they'll keep you right on the couch raising 20,000 kids. Yep. Talking about what you should have, could have, would have done. Trying to make your kids uh, play all the sports you never played when you were in high school. Nobody has time for that. The next so generation true. included. And, it, and that's the thing, too. It is a generational thing. You know, my, at my second event, my mother um, had a friend. She, this woman took the train from Harlem up to Bronxville. I had my um, event at the Bronxville Women's Club, right, where we're technically not supposed to be. But mm -hmm. I made a way for us to have an event there, too. So she showed up and, and she talked about that. You know, how wonderful it is that, you know, someone at my age, and I'm 35, had the the sense to do something like that and and again thinking about like if they would have had the tools to do things like that for themselves you know how things would be so different and it's interesting because you know I look at even my daughter she just turned 14 and like these kids need the tools now to know that they need to take care of themselves, think about what they want for themselves, think about their goals, think about their dreams and start working on them young. So, so that you're not, you know, much older, just trying to figure it out. If you are, then that's good because there's still time. But let's put, you know, the tools in these kids' yeah. hands so that they can we do better start than the generation the before. Seeds. Yeah. Absolutely. And planting the seeds with our children is going through what we need to go through. Absolutely. See, uh, the generational hurt, the generational trauma, we have to put a stop to that. Because yeah. if we don't, we pass it on to our children and our children are pass it on to their children. We right. have to tell everyone or our children. First, we have to tell ourselves, you could be anything you want. Age does not matter. Time does not matter. If you want to go out there and be a lawyer at 85, go out there and be a lawyer. Don't let nothing stop you. But we got to start with ourselves and then pass that on to our children. Whatever it is you want to do, mommy and daddy have your support. Right. Whatever it is, or just mommy or just daddy, because there's single fathers in the world, just like there's single mothers in the world. Whatever it is you want to do, support your child. Don't live through your child. Um, we got to stop doing that, too. Absolutely. Pushing you know our what? dreams onto our children. Because we don't have the car to go after them ourselves, right? Everybody is afraid of something. And when you get to a certain point in life, it's that fear of failure, right? Oh, well, I'm not going to start a new career at this point in life, or I'm not going to do this at this point in life. And that's for the birds. Like, it really is. Because is. then, like you said, you know, then we're putting that on somebody else to, to live our dreams for us. And that's not fair. Because then we stunt their growth and we don't give them an opportunity to live in their truth and do what they actually want to do for themselves. So true. And that's why the journey is so, so important. And that's why I created this space on my podcast called Journey to Self-Care. Because I guarantee you, Lalia, there's a mother sitting home on the couch and is going to listen to this podcast episode. And what do you think they're going to say to themselves? If she did it, I most definitely can do it. Because people... Yeah, people need to hear these stories where I was labeled at labeled by everyone as a stay-at-home mom. And that wasn't who I was. But you, know? you started believing it for a couple of years until you got out of that funk and said, That's not who I am. No. That's not what I stand for. No. I'm so was... much more. Yep. And same, you know, like not being raised to sit still and wait for anything to, to happen, right? So I'm going to wait until my kids are all 
in school in kindergarten and then I'll start living my life again. That's wild. You know, that's not, that's not something that very many people actually want for themselves. And that's okay. You know how many people tell me like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing too much, right? I, I'm juggling too many things or, you know, maybe I should just focus on this or just focus on that. Like, no, I'm going to do everything that I want to do as long as I'm waking up and I'm opening my eyes in the morning and I've been blessed to see another sun rise. I'm going to, my mother calls it, make hay while the sun shines. Mm-hmm. So no, I'm not putting anything on the back burner for tomorrow. I'm not waiting for this one to go to school. I'm not waiting for this one to be big enough to go to daycare. I'm not waiting for anybody else to be comfortable with the decisions that I am going to make. You know, I'm going to do what I feel is best for myself. And in turn, that's what's best for my children because they're watching me live my best life. They're watching me do what I need to do to take care of me so that I can take care of them. Yeah. And another thing before, you know, it, one thing that I was thinking about so much before I, I, I got on here was if I could tell myself anything, right? Because I had to think about when did the journey really start? And for me to think about when the journey started, I had to think about the things that hurt me in the past, the struggles that I faced in the past. What put me in a place where I didn't have self-love, self-worth, self-care, you know? And and like I said, that was being 21, getting pregnant and and things really shifting for me, right? All the negativity from other people, me feeling like, oh my God, what if I don't finish school? What if I don't do this? What if I don't do that? For the younger women out there, you have your whole life ahead of you. You do not need to wait for anyone else to present an opportunity to you. That's number one. Number two, Mm -hmm. know your self-worth. At a young age, and don't take anything less than what you know you deserve. Because if there's someone out there who is meant for you, they're going to take you as you are. You don't have to be anything. You don't have to, to not be anything. And that was a big complex that I had with wow. being a single parent. You know, no one's going to want me. I really felt like no one would want me. And to lighten up the, the mood, do you know how many men out there could care less about how many children some of these women have. So true. And it's not for, not for you know, there, there's lots of jokes out there. There's lots of memes, right, about men out there dying to be somebody else's um, stepdaddy. But it's not, it, it, we put that pressure on ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I had this whole negative connotation about being single and having a child. And, and I think about it now, it was so irrational, but it really hurt me. It put me in a place of, of being really depressed, really anxious, really alone. You, you, I was resentful of myself. You know, you start thinking about the decisions that you make. And I should have done this and I should have done that. That's for the birds. You have your whole life ahead of you. And what's meant for you will always be for you. So, like I said, for the younger women, don't think that you need to be doing anything. If there's someone out there for you, they're going to love you as you are. You having a child, you not having a child will not dictate that. Wow, that's some amazing advice. For the older women, right? So I'm speaking at 35 and and with my husband for 10 years and and now having three children. And so I've juggled that having multiple children, you know, being in a relationship. Don't be stuck anywhere that you don't want to be. Because we don't know what tomorrow holds. If you are a mother, if you have children, your children are watching. It is your obligation to do your best for yourself so that they know what healthy and happy looks like. Putting on a fake smile and just going day to day is not serving anyone. You're hurting yourself and in turn, your children will hurt too because they're going to see you hurting and they're going to feel that for you, whether they speak on it or not. My, I have a three-year-old or soon to be three-year-old and I have a four-year-old. And when I don't look right, they call me out on it. Putting on a fake smile doesn't mask anything for anybody, including yourself, right? So let's break out of that thinking we have to be putting on this happy face for everybody else because that's not what it is. You have to do you for you because at the end of the day, all you have is you. You're leaving here the same way you came in. So do it with a smile on your face. Being somebody's wife, being somebody's mother, it's not the end all be all, right? There are women who are my age, women who are older than me who don't have children yet. And they're thinking they missed out on something. Live the life that you want to live for yourself, not in comparison to what the people beside you are doing. Because nobody's airing their dirty laundry. 
We're all out here trying to do what we think looks best for the gram, right? We're doing mm -hmm. what we think looks good for everybody else. You have no idea the struggles that people face behind closed doors. Your obligation is to live your best life for yourself because it doesn't matter what somebody shows you in the happy pictures. Everybody's going through something. So don't keep yourself in a place of misery, sadness, anger, resentment for anybody else because nobody's really watching. They might be lurking, but nobody's watching long enough for it to matter to you. Wow. That is some amazing advice. I truly, truly love that advice. Everybody that's listening, you could be anything you want to be. All you do is have to apply pressure. Yep. Do on what's on best top. for you. Yep. Lalia, I want to thank you for sharing your story with us. As I've stated, someone thank needs you. to hear it. I mm -hmm. guarantee you. For Lalia, sure. if someone wanted to reach out to you, how can they contact you? Send me an email at howmanyhats at gmail.com. You can find me at Instagram. It's at how underscore many underscore hats, H-A-T-Z. Um, and that's important too. So email howmanyhats is H-A-T-Z um, dot com would be the best way to reach me. Or you can go to howmanyhats.com and check me out for yourself. See what I'm about. See what I offer. See what we could work on together. Check out a little bit of my journey and see how far I've come. And she most definitely has come far. And I am super happy that I've met someone like Lalia. Because if I need advice or I'm struggling with a goal, I know that if I tell her the goal, she's going to walk me through it. And okay. she's going to let me know, you have to do it. And that's all we need. We need to hang around, have circles with like-minded people. Because Absolutely. if you don't, you will go nowhere. You will stay stuck in that comfortable space because everybody loves comfortability. Absolutely. It's time that we break out of comfortability and get uncomfortable. And that was another gem that you dropped. It's okay right. to be uncomfortable. So I want to thank you again, Lalia. And I will make sure that all of her contact information will be in the show notes today. Thank, thank you, you, Janelle, for sharing this platform. You're very welcome.